Education Secretary John Swinney, who laid out the new rules for children and teachers going back to school in Scotland. I'd like to express my thanks to teachers, parents and to children for their engagement in learning over the period of lockdown. I know it's been a tough and demanding time and I'm very grateful to everyone for their extraordinary efforts that have been put in place to support our children and young people. I'd also like to extend my thanks to the outstanding childcare staff of Scotland. Day in and day out, you work incredibly hard, providing a loving, nurturing environment that is a foundation for a positive future for our youngest children. Childcare has carried on during the pandemic. Key worker childcare was at the heart of keeping Scotland going during lockdown. Without it, Scotland could not have responded to the COVID-19 pandemic the way that we did. And I extend my warmest thanks to you for your efforts. In phase one of the relaxation of lockdown, all childlanders and fully outdoor childcare provision were able to reopen. Last week, the First Minister announced that from the 10th of July, informal childcare and the use of nannies could resume. And from yesterday, all other early learning and childcare settings were able to open. Looking ahead, I expect term-time childcare settings will reopen in line with schools next month. This will be welcome news to parents, families, the childcare workforce, and most importantly, to children. It is important to remember that this reopening is not a return to normal. Childcare will look and will feel a bit different. Some public health restrictions will remain in place at that time. These are about keeping children, staff, parents and the wider community safe. At the heart is the need to reduce the overall number of contacts that we each have in order that we can suppress the virus. We've issued guidance for the safe reopening of early learning and childcare and school aged childcare services that was created in collaboration with the sector and focuses on child and staff wellbeing and safety. This approach means that providers have had to adapt their approach it will have had an impact on how many children can attend a setting and may mean settings have had to spend money to reopen safely. I want to make clear that I do not want to keep these restrictions in place any longer than is necessary. And I'm pleased therefore to say that we've now received further scientific advice on these issues and we will be developing fresh guidance. If the virus continues to be suppressed, if we stay on track, then we can start to ease these restrictions. We will work with the early learning and childcare sector to issue revised guidance by the end of July to take effect in August. This will not be a return to normal childcare operations, but we now expect that the bubbles model that restricts children to small groups will not be needed. And we will be able to ease the complete ban on mixing or blending different types of childcare, such as child minding and nurseries. I hope this will be welcome news for the sector and for parents. Mm. Lastly, on childcare, I know it's been difficult for the private and third sector during COVID-19. And I know that the transition to the new way of working that the virus requires, of increased cleaning, additional equipment, developing outdoor space and adaptations to support the physical distancing of adults, will all mean more financial pressure. The childcare sector is essential to our economic recovery, I'm therefore announcing that we will create a transitional fund for the childcare sector to the value of £11.2 million to financially support the reopening of childcare services. I'm also delighted to announce that today a new workforce support fund for childminders is opening for applications. It will see the Scottish Government and the Scottish Childminding Association jointly provide grants to childminders to help them adapt to the reality of the virus. Turning finally to schools, work is ongoing to plan for the safe resumption of full-time schooling for all pupils in August. This morning we have published the scientific advice that will inform the approach that is taken to plan for this aim. This advice remains conditional on general community factors such as reductions in infection rates, confidence and surveillance measures and a process for handling local outbreaks, all of which will be informed by the advice of the COVID-19 Advisory Group on Education and Children's Issues. The advice we have now received, however, sets out that no physical distancing is required between children and young people in primary and secondary schools. The advice also states that school transport, dedicated services such as school buses, also do not need to have physical distancing within them as long as infection remains, rates remain low. We will continue to work with councils, professional bodies,
with trade unions and parents to develop the guidance that schools take to successfully reopen next month. And subject to Parliament's agreement, I plan to make a further statement to Parliament next week on this vital point. And that was the Scottish Education Secretary, John Swinney, speaking of it earlier. Now, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, visited a job centre plus in London earlier.